A colonoscopy takes approximately 15, 20 minutes, sometimes more depending on how difficult it is. So the infusion of stool is time in addition to the colonoscopy because we instill it colonoscopically. That's the way we, that's the way I did it. Uh, I was the first person to do it uh, that way. And now that seems to be the most popular way to do it. Uh, to infuse the stool takes about two minutes. So you're dealing with a colonoscopy plus two minutes. What do the patients feel like after the colonoscopy? They feel like they had a colonoscopy, which is, should be, depending on the skill of the performer, of course, nothing, right? Except after the fecal transplant, they're going to feel better very quickly. So I, I think that, you know, the concept of uh, colonoscopic therapy is one that, you know, should not be a frightening concept. You know, stool has been, before we did this, and, and actually I should be honest and say that the very first one was done in 1958, but that was in humans. It was done for a hundred years before that in animals. People have been using uh, stool to treat uh, chronic diarrhea in horses for a hundred years. They've been doing transformation in cattle, uh, putting in the gastric contents of from healthy cows into sick cows who've been treated with antibiotics and have just failure to thrive and they're off feed after having been given antibiotics for say mastitis or inflammation of the, you know, the milk glands. Um, so this is something that is, that is certainly not new. We're just reinventing it. It had fallen out of uh, attention for a while. Um, you can give stool by nasogastric tube I don't think that's such a nice way to get it, uh, because if you belch or vomit, uh, that's not so pleasant. Uh, but you can put it in through the upper tract, uh, an upper tract endoscopy. You can put it into the distal duodenum or proximal jejunum, and it'll go down and colonize the GI tract. And sometimes I do it that way in patients with irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, it has been given by enema, uh, patients have given it to themselves by enema. I had one woman who came to me uh, after giving, giving herself, she had ulcerative colitis, and she was having 15 bloody bowel movements a day, and she gave herself, after reading what we have done uh, on the internet, uh, she gave herself um, 30 enemas of her boyfriend's stool over the course of four months and took herself from those bloody stools to four non-bloody stools a day. And then she came to see me. Uh, and I've had many patients that have started off giving themselves uh, enemas. So that's another way to do it. And uh, I think that uh, the best way is probably uh, colonoscopically, but uh, there are other ways to skin this cat. I think that stool is the most exciting thing in gastroenterology. And I think we're really standing uh, on the brink of discovering the wonderment of stool, that it is a rich, environment, a complex environment of a multitude of living creatures, each with their own metabolic activities, the uh, metabolic products of which talk to the cells, and interact with the receptors of the cells, and uh, have a systemic manifestation. And uh, I think in years to come, you've heard it first here, in years to come, we will know that certain diseases can be cured by stool, but it's really not stool. It's a certain part of the stool, 
a certain bacterial species of the stool. Once we isolate all of the bacterial species and other living creatures in the stool, we may know that constipation is this particular species, irritable bowel is that particular species, C. difficile, which we have some evidence for now, showing how important bacteroidetes is, bacteroidetes species for C. difficile, and then it'll be a relatively simple matter to isolate that particular species, give a pure culture of that particular species in pill form to a patient, and they didn't have to have a fecal.